What's up guys? Welcome back to Deck Tech for Decks. I'm your host Caleb. If you want to support me, you can always use the TCG player link in the description down below or as always just liking, commenting, subscribing will do the trick. Now, let's get into the Elven Council Precon upgrade. This is a $45 upgrade and we are going to be sticking with the face commander. Just for that card advantage, she's an elf, which is definitely the route we took. We cut all of the cards that care about casting those five drops to six drops, and then we just added in more elves. Additionally, we're going to add some card draw and some tribal synergies. That way it just buffs up the synergy in the deck, and it'll really get those elf ball or the elf ball strategy going. So let's get into what we added. First up, we have Beast Whisperer. This guy's an elf, and he's going to draw you a card whenever you cast one of those creature spells. This will allow you to just throw all of the cards in your hand onto the battlefield nine times out of ten and get you a whole new hand. Hence, Elf Ball. The goal of this deck, cast as much elves as fast as possible. Next up, we have Biden of Thassa. I like this one specifically because we can force our opponent to attack. That's going to leave them wide open. Then we attack them with our massive elf army and draw into a lot of other elves. Next up, Kindred Discovery. This is a tribal deck. We are running a lot of elves. So now whenever we cast elves or attack with elves, we're going to draw a lot of cards. Even elves entering the battlefield will trigger this card. Leaf Crowned Visionary. This one's super solid as well. Paying one green to go ahead and draw a card whenever you cast an elf that costs one green anyway is not that high of a cost and can really get us churning through our library. Life Crafter. Life Crafters Bestiary, there is some scry synergies in the deck, so that's going to work there. And again, we're just paying one green to draw the card whenever we cast a creature spell. Primordial Sage and Soul of the Harvest, same thing, right? Whenever we cast one of those creature spells or a creature enters the battlefield, we're going to just go ahead and draw a card. Super solid cards. This is basically going to be just the strategy of the deck. Cast as many creatures as fast as possible, flood the board, and then we're going to buff the board up and take everybody out. Moving on, let's talk about the elves we added. We have Azuri Claw of Progress. This guy's going to be super solid for those elves that care about their power, and he can really buff up a board pretty fast. The other Azuri. We also run him because he's just going to give all of our creatures plus three and trample. Notably, we can activate that multiple times. We do need 10 mana for that, but this is a green deck and we can get to that. So this could theoretically buff our board plus six, plus six, and give all of our elves trample, which could definitely end out the game. Findhorn Helves is just a solid mana dork for one mana. This is kind of the elves we want to run. Really good early game and late game, they can get buffed up and, again, start taking out our opponents. Immaculate Magistrate, this one just buffs one of our elves to the moon, which is going to be really impactful on those elves that, again, care about their power. Duraga, this one, an elf that cares about his power, right? If we start throwing 1-1 one -one counters on this guy, buffing our entire board, that can really end to a game in our favor, right? Lean War Elves, again, this is just a really efficient mana dork for early game. Lease this guy, he can make elves. Now, whenever we're casting elves, more elves are entering the battlefield, and this is going to be really good for our tribal synergies. Marwen, this one. You cast elves, you get 1-1 one, one counters, and then she just taps for more mana, judging on how many counters you have on her. So this one, again, really efficient and a really good target to start putting counters on. Priest of Titania, another one that cares about the elves you control, and she's just going to add a lot of mana to your mana pool. Timber Red... Wi ah... Timber Watch Elf. This one, also super solid. We're just buffing one of those elves up again, which again, if we give one of them trample, we can start taking people out with this pretty easily. Wirewood Channeler. This one, he's another one that's just going to tap for a bunch of mana. This deck does not have an issue producing a lot of mana, and honestly, elves never have. Elves, their number one problem is one, the card draw, which we already went through and we already added. And then board wipes. If you wipe a board of elves, all the elves are in your graveyard. But we do have some ways to get our whole graveyard of elves back to our hands, such as Creeping Renaissance. This can be activated twice in a, uh, t twice a game also, right? You can cast it once and then again for its flashback cost, returning all creatures to our hand ready to be casted again. And that will start drawing us more cards, right? So the synergies are there for this deck 100%. Let's look at some other good stuff we added that are not necessarily elves. Champion of Liamholt, this can make our entire board unblockable, and it doesn't take us very long to get there. It's honestly one of the best cards in the deck for taking out our opponents. Speaking of best cards in the deck, we have Defiler of Vigor. 
a lot of these elves have a really, really low cost. So the fact that we're able to pay life for their green pips and then start buffing our entire board of elves up, this card can be insane in the deck and honestly starts buffing up our creatures to an insane power and people won't be able to stop this elf ball coming at them. Azuri's Predation. Now, we cannot have people going wider than us. Going wide is what we want to do. So if someone does go wider than us, we can use this card to basically make them sit down and then we basically get their whole board in 3-3 three, three, or 4-4 four, four beasts, right? And that's going to be very impactful. Very good for the Avengers of Zendikars, the Phylath players. This can really just sit them down. Reflections of Lajara. This one's going to double up on all of the elves that we cast. Notably, the legend rule will go ahead and kill that here. So not the legendaries, but we will double up on all of our non-legendary elves, just making our board wider, even faster, getting us more mana, getting us more card advantage. This card's going to be amazing in the deck. Now, let's move on to those non-budget ads that I think could really buff up the deck, but honestly, they have a pretty good price tag on them. Allosaurus Shepard. This one... Basically a uh, crater hoof behemoth, but it's an elf. All of your elves are now dinosaurs for some reason, and then they're just going to have a base power of 5-5. Five, five. <sighs> Seems pretty fair to me, right? This card is $21, but honestly, like I said, it could be a solid game ender in the deck. Crater hoof behemoth. It's no, you know, secret that this card's amazing in go wide strategies. It can get a little boring after a while because of how effective it is at just winning games. I mean, honestly... Excuse me. You don't need that much elves to make this super impactful and start taking players out, which is, again, why it becomes kind of boring, kind of monotonous. So that's kind of why I included it in the non-budget options. And then we have El Elvish Champion. This one's super solid. The everybody's playing green. A lot, I'm um, not everybody, but a lot of people play green. So this is going to make you unblockable to the green player next to you. And honestly, that can take them out pretty quickly. And it will turn off all of your com or turn on all of your combat damage synergies. Now, guys, that's going to do it for the deck tech. I hope you guys enjoyed. Definitely love the elf ball strategy, and Simic is going to be an amazing color to do that with. We get access to all of the ways to draw cards, judging on our creatures dealing combat damage, and our um, tribal synergies. So, it sounds like a solid route to take. If you guys wanted to lean into the 5 to 6 power matters, I would take a look at Imotli. This one will give all of your 6 drops cascade, and that can be an insane route to take. If you didn't want to take the classic elf ball strategy because i get it it is kind of like one dimensional cast all the creatures in your hand as fast as possible buff them all up and take out your opponents so i just thought i'd figure to let you guys or thought i'd let you guys know that at the end of the video a motley could be a solid commander if you wanted to take this in the six power tribal route all right guys that's gonna do it i hope this helped you in your deck building endeavors and i'll see you in the next one